All right, hi everybody. So back doing some testing on this Brother SC625 that I picked up. In my last couple of videos, I was just like so excited because I could not believe what this machine could do just pulling it out of the box. Um, sewing with just basic vinyl to uh, folding it over with the needle that was in the machine. And I just, with, cons with inexpensive construction thread and embroidery bobbin thread on the bobbin. So I posted those two videos up on YouTube on my channel. You can watch those. But I want to talk about the bells and whistles that I'm discovering on this machine. Now, one of the things about this machine is it has technology that my $10,000 sewing machine has. And other machines and other brands of this caliber, not even, not even an embroidery part, don't have the bells and whistles. Let me give you an example. So I'm going to be sewing along here. I'm just going to keep sewing and sewing and sewing. And then as I keep sewing, you're going to see what's going to happen. You have to wait for it. Just wait for it, guys. There it is. What does that say? It says, the bobbin thread is almost empty. Now, where have you seen that on a $300 sewing machine? Where? Nobody! <laughs> on this brother SC625, though. So let me take this out. And I'm going to show you something. Now, on all my top-of-the-line sewing machines, there's only one that shows such little thread left, where all the other ones... Just let me explain. I'll show you this. Let me just pop this out and show you. Look at that. Can you see that? That is how much bobbin thread is left. There's barely going to be any waste there. Now, I bought a domestic sewing and board machine in a different brand last year, and no matter how much I set it, it still leaves like almost a quarter of a bobbin left on her, and it beeps to let me know that it's going out. And I paid th oh, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine. I paid four times more money for that machine than I did for this machine. Now, look at that. There's going to be no waste. No waste at all. So, that is a cool feature which is normally only found on a higher end machine. Isn't that nice? All right, so now let's start sewing again. So, let's just say I'm sewing along, which I'm going to do right here. I'm going to be sewing along, and I'm going to mimic a thread break, okay? I'm going to mimic a thread break. So let me just get up here and cut my thread. So as we're sewing, what does that say? Check and rethread the upper thread. It's not only has a bobbin sensor, but it has an upper thread break sensor on a $300 sewing machine. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's it's mind blowing, isn't it? It is freaking mind blowing that it 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 does that. <laughs> I'm just unbelievable. Oh, and by the way. I want to show you guys something. So, everybody talks about their dealer says, don't use Coates, Coates thread. Well, you know, they're talking about the old Coates thread that looks like, like this, and it's got, it's old. This is the new Coates thread. It's the new modern version. It's, it's the, the modern generation's version. This isn't your great-grandmother, your grandmother's version. This is Dual Duty XP. This is great thread to use. It's really, really nice thread. Also, what's decent thread to use, which can, you, you can find these at your local stores, is, you know, Guterman thread. Even Guterman thread is good. I, I've been using Guterman thread, so why don't we just use some Guterman thread now? So when I tell you I use all brands of threads, I do. But this Dual Duty XP is a really nice thread. And then another nice thread is Madeira uh, construction thread. All, all the different 
uh, mid, uh, selling threads out there, they're all good threads. Now, I gotta tell you something. I don't know if you ever know, if I ever told you this before, but if you want to test the thread to see if it's good thread, if it's still good or not, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take about this much thread, wrap it in your fingers a couple times, and you're gonna do the thread break test. If it's hard, if it makes a loud snap, the thread is still good. So let me get this close to the camera so you can hear it. You hear that? That's strong. That means that thread is good. You can use it. If it makes barely a break, get rid of it. Okay? That's a good tip to remember, no matter what brand thread it is. Now, here's this dual duty. This is a lightweight construction thread. So, listen to this. You ready? Hear how strong that was? That means you can use it. Now, here's the Madeira. This Madeira is called Katona. So, let me just... I think this is more of a top stitch thread. This one's going to be tough to break. Here we go. Oh, hear that? That's strong. So, no matter what anybody says about thread, the true test is if it makes the loud snap. That means the thread is still good and you can use it. If it doesn't snap very loud, don't use it. It's going to continue to break and it's not going to be much good for you. All right. Let me get my thread cap. Now, here's another thing, too, a lot of you don't know about. Um, you gotta use thread caps. Now some of you may come from brands that didn't have thread caps. Now the brother, the brother has four sizes. It has this little tiny thread size, uh, I'm sorry, little tiny skinny little slit here that goes into spools of thread like this. If it's when you put that in your spindle and you put this in, this is when you're, when you're doing it horizontal on top. And this fits in like that and holds that thread. I did a spool cap video a while back. You guys got to watch that. Just search, search for it. Now, for this size thread, you would use the small spool cap. If you're going to use the large, this large comb, these old-fashioned spools, and they still make this thread, they still make this kind of thread, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. The only reason why people tell you not to use it is it's usually people who don't sell it at stores. They'll tell you not to use something because they don't sell it. So, anyway, some of these uh, these spools have a slit at the top. And why is there a slit there? You know, if you rub your finger, you can feel your feel the slit. The slit is there, so this is where they used to store the thread. They used to put the little... No, no, I can't find it. Let's see here. Where is it at? See, now that I want it, I can't feel it. Anyway, there was a slit, a slit at the top, and you put your thread in there, and that's how it's stored it, and prevent it from, from unwinding. But the problem with that is, is when this is feeding off, it can, the thread can get caught in that slit, which will hold the thread back, and it'll pull on the needle, it'll cause the needle to jam onto the throat plate, which causes a burr on the throat plate, which can also go down into the bobbin case and cause a burr and, and break it. So how do you prevent that? Well, you don't use the medium spool cap because the medium spool cap doesn't cover it all the way. You use the larger spool cap because the larger spool cap, when, when you put it on, the thread will be able to lift up and away from the spool thread that it's on, avoiding getting caught in that little slit, and then you have problem-free sewing. All right? So all that information I have on my thread cap video, if you go to my YouTube channel and then you look, look up uh, spool caps, on my channel you will find that and you can watch that so let me just thread this back up again all these little things man that I'm used to on my high-end machine that I'm not used to seeing on this these entry-level beautiful I mean this is technology you know I, I told everybody before I said when I bought my first embroidery machine, it, it was a 4x4 four four hoop, just like this. It was a 4x4 four four hoop, okay? And it had a little L L LED or LCD screen, very, very limited, very limited, very kind of fuzzy looking everything. Look at this beautiful color touch screen today. I paid $1,000 for that machine. $1,000 in 1997, I think it was. And the only thing that that machine had which was, oh my God, it was like so cool. It was the coolest thing because no other brands had it. Was this, I'll show you. I got this thread, I'm gonna load, I'm ready to sew, ready? Press on my foot pedal. Oh, what does that say? Lower the presser foot. Lower the presser foot lever. Now, even on that 
embroidery only machine that I bought back in like I said 97 98 for a thousand dollars it had that beep on there if you forget to put your foot down okay now I understand that some of the brother computerized entry-level machines have incorporated that beep for several years now which is great that was a technology that was like wow far beyond even Janome I have a Janome MC9000, and I, that was a big buck machine. I think it was like $3,000 plus for that machine. That didn't even have the beep. But at that time, when Brother came out with their little embroider machines, they had the beep. So you see, there was a lot of technology I had that Brother had that others didn't have. Now, I am not going to complain about this one thing, because I'm just spoiled, all right? This has all the features the bells and whistles of my very top of the line baby lock Elisimo. It does. And what other feature does it have? I'm going to show you. Say, for instance, you have to get into the bobbin case area here. Okay? Oh, what does that do? Oh, there's another message. There is no needle plate cover. Attach a needle plate cover. Isn't that wonderful? Now, when you're cleaning and you take this out and you do all your cleaning and everything and you go to put your plate, your, uh, bobbin plate cover, throat plate cover back on, if you don't have it on right, this message is not going to go away. And it's very easy to think you've got it connected in there, but you may not have it connected probably. Another thing too is by taking that out, can I sew? I can't sew. I'm pressing on the foot pedal and it will, let, will not let me sew. That's a great safety feature. So if I'm in here cleaning, normally you're supposed to shut your machine off, but sometimes you have to pop that out and you want to see so you keep the light on this is an additional light I have here this doesn't come with the machine this is an additional light and everybody always asks me in all my videos where do you get your lights where do you get your lights and I'm going to tell you again just go to Google and enter 30 LED industrial sewing machine light and then it'll pop up on Google then hit shopping hit the at the menu hit shopping and you'll see all these vendors where you can choose the machine uh, the, I mean the light of your choice okay now these are made for industrial machines which means it is magnetized okay so what do we do to stick it well some of these machines some of these lights now are coming with a uh, double-sided tape and a washer because they see us home sewers like me have been doing this so China got smart and decided to include a washer so what you do is you get a metal washer and you take that metal washer and all you're going to do is take some double-sided Gorilla tape uh, or 3M automotive tape. You tape it to wherever you want and then it just mag magnetizes right there. It's not going to hurt your sewing machine, guys. Just don't put it over here in front of the computer screen. <laughs> you, you don't want it. But you can put it right there and then you take the, uh, the wire in the back. You buy some of those fridge clips or those 3M wire clips, those clear wire clips, and you just double stick them in the back and the wire gets out of the way. And look how much better light you have when you're sewing. You see that? Isn't that nice? All right. I've been showing that for a long time now. And uh, no one seemed to know about that. And uh, I was showing that. And I think the reason why no one knew about it is because at that time, not many people were investing in industrial sewing machines. So they didn't know about these lights. So that's a great tip for the home sewer. Now, when I put this back on, I click in and all the way, that message is going to go away. See that? Now I can start sewing again. So when I put my foot back on the pedal and start sewing, now it sews. If this is loose, see, I'm trying to press on the foot pedal, it won't sew. And the message comes back up. As soon as I do that, message goes away. This is what is so fascinating about this little compact machine that... Now I'm going to tell you right now, the, the date, this is uh, July, uh, was it July 5th, I think it is, 4th, 5th, yeah, July 5th, uh, 2022. So this is the SE625. They come out with a new model called the SE630. Now honestly, I'm looking at a lot of these machines by brother, I'm reading the comparisons online, and all I see them doing is like what the Singer company does. They're basically keeping the same machine. They're just changing the color of the front of the plate here. And they may, may add a, an additional um, embroidery designs for free or this or that. But they're basically the 630, I mean 620, 625, 630. They're all the same. But Walmart was selling this forever for uh, $380, $380, $385. $380, and then they were out of it during the pandemic. You couldn't find this. And right during when the pandemic happened, 
these gougers went into Walmart and bought tons of these. They either bought them or they stole them, one or the other. And they put them up on eBay and they were selling for like seven, eight hundred dollars right? And I couldn't believe people would pay that much money for this machine. But then when I saw that Baby Luck was selling their version called the Verve in their stores for $700, I could see why people were spending that kind of money. All right, so now, so since Brother came out and had the 630 that came out now, 625, you, every so often you'd see a 630 on the shelf at Walmart whenever China decided they could ship it. But it wasn't made in China, China no more. Guess where these machines are made now? So they went from Japan to Taiwan, and from Taiwan, uh, what? See, I think it was, I think it was Japan to China, China Taiwan, and now most every brand machine is being made in Vietnam. Vietnam, nothing in America yet. We don't have anything made in America yet. Um, but you got to remember, understand, Brother is not an American company. Brother is a Japanese company. Okay, Singer, Singer was an American company. Singer Sewing Machine was an American company. I think whoever took that company over just didn't do it right because they could have capitalized more on that name and really done a lot more with their products, but they didn't. Anyway, that's another story. We're talking about this. So anyway, this whole system here is just from They were selling it for $380 on the shelf at Walmart past five, what, four, five, six years maybe. And then I was online and one of the sewing groups on Facebook and the gal posted this and she said she got this on clearance and she got a really good deal and somebody asked her well how much did you get the deal for and where did you get it and she said Walmart and she told everybody what she paid for I'm like no way so I went to Walmart brought it up and it said two hundred and eighty seven dollars and every one of the Walmarts around me there's like four or five Walmarts around in my vicinity everyone had a model in stock now what did that tell me? Well, perhaps Brother had so many of these coming to the United States and during the pandemic and the shipping and the, and the shipping containers being stuck out at sea and stuff like that, these might have been on a boat for a very, very long time. And when they finally arrived, which is just recently, the new model had replaced it all. So they just said, we just discount them to get rid of them. Nothing wrong with them. They just discount. So. Why I'm telling you this is because if you want a beautiful machine that you can take anywhere you travel, when you go places, when you go to guilds, when you go to retreats, when you're traveling to go visit your mother or your grandmother or your kids, take, go get this machine and get it. You will not be sorry. Now, here's what I said I'm not going to complain about. This has everything a top of the line machine really has for features. The only thing I miss on it because I'm so used to it is a knee lifter. I love a knee lifter. but I'm not going to complain for the price of this machine. I'm not going to complain. But I will make an extension table for this, a small extension table, because I was taught industrial methods of sewing. And in industrial methods of sewing, you don't hold your, you're not like this going like this when you sew. You need support for your arm and your arm here, and you're feeding the fabric like this when you sew. Okay? So many home sewers will sew with fabric with a machine like this. They'll buy this machine or other machines like there's no extension table. And let's just let me just show you something. Here. I just have my cleaning cloth here. Pretend this is you know some other fabric. So you're sewing here, and let's just say this is a stretch heavy fabric, okay? You know those real stretchy four-way stretch fabrics that they just slide and they, they're heavy. They they you know, and they're it's pulling and dragging, and you're fighting trying to keep this here. Well, with an extension table, this lays up on the extension table and there's no pulling it off to the side. There's no dragging. You're not fighting this. You're not stretching that seam trying to keep it straight as you sew. That's why an extension table is so important for machines. Now, if you're good with woodwork, you can make your own and you can put legs on it, but you can also buy it. You can also buy a custom made one. You could buy one that's made for this machine. You just have to go online and look, but there, there's options out there for you. There's many, many options. With that said now, I have a size, a gal asked me when I did my sample the other night, I don't know if I still have it, I might have threw it out, I might have thrown it out, let me see, yeah I was doing so much testing I threw it out but I'll show you what I had here. So when I was doing all my testing and, and, and shot that other video, I had this vinyl, it was multiple layers of vinyl. See I was doing a lot of testing here and this was skip stitch because I started changing the needle. But when I used the needle that was in the machine right out of the box, and I sewed through two layers of this, 
it was flawless and you saw that in my previous video so a gal on a sewing group said what size needle is in there what do you what needle do you have in there and I say, it's the needle that came with the box. You know what size the needle is that comes with your machine when you take it out of the box, and most people don't. So I said, okay, so I bet it's a size 12 universal. So what I have in here is a size 12 universal. Let me cut another piece of vinyl, and I'm going to do another test on that. All right, got another piece of vinyl, and I found in my supply box of all accessory feet I have that are extra for other machines, I found the Teflon foot. I'm going to put my Teflon foot on here. And my last video, I sewed this without any, without a Teflon foot, just the standard J foot here. All right, so now, whenever you sew a vinyl, you need a longer stitch length. So let's see what I got here. I got 3.5 3 already, so that's good. All right, that's good. Oh, and this, this little stylus pen is great because, look, you can use the, the uh, push pad side to go through and then the pointed side to select and touch here. Isn't that nice? I got this online. I just and went to Google and entered stylus. Plastic stylus, rubber stylus, and that's what came up. So you guys can find a lot of stuff. I don't have any links. I don't have any affiliate links, so I can't direct you. And everything I look for, I go to Google. All right. So now I'm going to increase the stitch uh, tension. Because anytime you sew an everything heavy, you want a tighter tension. So let's just go to six on this. Let's see what six is going to do, okay? And this is a size 12 uni universal needle. This is two layers of vinyl. The vinyl's not cut even because I didn't have an even cut over there. So there is the top. Look how beautiful that is. And then here's the bottom. Look how beautiful that is. Isn't that gorgeous? That's the bottom and this is the top. Now, somebody said when I posted this on a uh, sewing group for, for men, um, the guy scolded me and said, oh, you should use size 69 thread and a 18 needle. Well, you know what? I'm not pushing this machine for that. That I would push on a more heavy duty machine and an industrial machine. I'm showing home sewers and beginners what you can accomplish with the basics so you don't break your machine or you don't throw it out of timing or whatever. Now, just for shits and giggles here, let's do four layers and see how well this will sew with four layers. And I think I'm gonna increase my tension at the top to seven and a half. All right, let's go. Let's see if this will work. Looking good. Looking good, guys. Oh, I didn't have my thread caught up in that. There we go. That, there's a little bar above the needle, and you got to click that in right. And it still sewed without it being clicked in, so that was an operator either. Okay, so here we go. Oh my gosh, look. So there's the top. And this is the Guterman thread, right? Here's the bottom. Look how perfect and beautiful that is, right? So this is for your basic home sewing. And when you guys and gals want to use some vinyl to make some handbags and you want to do your vinyl straps, I would not suggest doing anything heavier than this thread. I did try earlier to do a uh, top stitching thread with a uh, top stitching needle and it was working but every so often I'd have a skip stitch. So I would have to do some more testing on that to perfect that with the right recipe all right well one of the gals online I, I call it the right setup and one of the girls online who's a sewing teacher at her store said she calls that recipe not instead of the right setup she calls it a recipe and I guess she's referring that because all because ladies housewives know recipes where us mechanical type people know setup okay so well, however you want to say it it means the same thing so you look at that so if you're going to make those straps for your bags this basic uh, poly construction thread will work just perfect and with contrasting thread it pops beautiful. Isn't that nice? So this is the capability of this machine. Don't push it. Do what it, it, it can do and I just showed you. Here, let me see. Four layers. One, two, three, four. Okay? So that would be the four layers when you're making your belt because they do, they take when they're making their straps, 
they fold it in, they fold it in like that, right? And then they fold this over, and then you've got your, your, your strap. So I want to show you all this right now, and I'm sure I'm going to discover more, and I may do another video later as I discover more. I hope I gave you enough information to help you with your sewing. I want a disclaimer here. I am not affiliated with any product um, that I discussed right now. Okay, I'm um, not affiliated with brother. I'm doing this because I'm excited for the newbies out there that want to learn how to sew. And I want to show them what you can have and what you can do uh, without breaking the bank. You know what I'm saying? And, and I do want to thank brother and Walmart for allowing this because, um, you know, there are sewing snobs out there that will turn their nose up at things like this, but the proof is in the pudding. And it's like someone told me years ago, that old saying, put your money where your mouth is. Well, brother did put their money where their mouth is. And they're saying, hey, you know what? We're giving the world an opportunity to learn how to sew. We're showing them our technology because obviously, you know, brother has far more advanced technology than what is here already. And that far more advanced technology is going on their major top of the line sewing machines. You know, those fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 sewing machines. But you know what? For an entry level, for uh, a veteran sewer that wants an extra machine, this is worth it. And like I said, I really didn't need another machine, but because I teach sewing, I have to keep up. I do private classes. I teach private. I have to learn these things about these different machines. So I invest whenever I see something I want to buy. And this was one of those things I couldn't pass up for the price. And... Um, I hope you guys enjoy this, and if you get this, leave a comment below. Let me know your experience with it. I, I, I haven't been this excited about a machine for a long time. I bought a machine last year. I was very excited about that. It was a different brand, but it, the technology for this, um, and the other one I bought last year was five times more than I paid for this, and this technology, like I said, is just mind-blowing for $300, you know, mind-blowing. So I just want to thank you for watching me, and I hope I showed you some things and I hope I showed some of the people who were skeptical uh, it's just just wonderful and like I said this is an embroidery so there's more with embroidery maybe I'll do a video later on with the embroidery because I made something tonight what did I do with it I have to show you oh, here it is I did do some embroidery and I made a lace this was one of the free designs that came with your machine so I used water soluble stabilizer okay and then, and this was Sulky, Sulky Water Soluble Stabilizer. And then I used this uh, thread. I just used um, embroidery thread. I used this white embroidery thread right here. And I used the white construction thread on the bottom, a white uh, embroidery bobbin thread for the bottom. And this is what I got. Now, I think next I'll try making one out of metallic thread because you know me and my metallic threads. I love metallic threads. So here, here's what I've got so far, everybody. And I'm one of the ladies that commented on one of my other videos said she hopes I do more videos on this machine. So here you go, my friend. And um, take this for what it's worth. And um, you guys, run, run, run and get it. Pull out that credit card and get this machine. It's so well worth it. Take care, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.